Last year, I reached third in the world in game week one. Incredible. And my game week one team selection for this year looks like this. Boom. Oh, yeah. They are in too. Here we go. Mo Salah has turned into a no Salah in my team with the Norwegian robot Erling Haaland joining the team instead. We now have double Arsenal, double Spurs, double Newcastle, double Palace, along with a Liverpool, Chelsea and Man City attacker with great bench cover and even 0.5 million in the bank. You may as well all delete your FPL teams because Vegan Boy is winning it all. My only premiums are Haaland and Saka, the two talisman for the two best teams in the league, where we also know exactly what to expect from them and Arsenal and Man City, unlike the likes of Salah and Palmer who are playing under new managers, so we're not quite sure how good they're going to be yet, so we've opted for the cheaper alternatives in Jota and in Kungu. So yes, I can confirm I will be playing FPL seriously this year, so seriously, we're going to try and beat that third in the world. First in the world. Here we go. I'm not going to turn into a TED talk and send you to sleep chinwagging about every single player in my team for years and years and years and years and years. But I am going to summarize each of my picks so you know I'm not just a man with a sexy bucket hat. I do actually have that big brain energy as well. So David Raya from Arsenal is my goalkeeper of choice, as despite costing 5.5 million, he's cheaper than all of the other Arsenal defenders and is actually nailed. And with some slightly tougher fixtures up first, he could even outscore them, making the save points as well. Hopefully, he will save me from embarrassment and keep all of those sheets clean too, like he did last year, winning the Golden Glove. Pedro Porro is a defender who is allergic to defending. That literally makes him the perfect FPL defender. 5.5 million could be quite expensive for a Spurs defence, right? But he's mainly here for that attacking threat and could be a threat to anyone else who doesn't have him right from the start because those fixtures are extra tasty. Crystal Palace's Daniel Munoz has the potential to be one of the best value players in the entire game as he is sometimes the most furthest forward player in that entire Palace team which is not bad for a 5 million price defender with those sexy fixtures too, oi oi. And my final starting defender is Lewis Hall. Nice that he is literally named after his game week 1 FPL score, as a big boy Hall is definitely incoming, playing Southampton at home, and he's basically been playing as a left wing in preseason, so he is definitely worth the risk for that big boy upside right from the start. Worst case scenario, we have other players on the bench to cover him. My one and only premium mid is Bakayo Saka. Saka has scored more and more FPL points every season he plays and I am actually predicting him to be the highest total point scorer at the very end of the season out of anyone else. So it's probably a good idea to start with him here. Another man who will be starting in game week one is Diogo Jota. When Jota plays, he can even outscore the likes of Salah and co, but it's just the case of knowing if he will start. Thankfully for us though, Gakpo and Darwin Nunez return late from international football and don't quite look ready. So I am ready to spin the slot machine and risk it with Arnie Slots Liverpool's Jota in here. Worst case scenario, we play him against Ipswich for that amazing potential. If he doesn't do well or doesn't look like he's going to start the next few weeks, he is a great price point to move to literally any other midfielder. Eze has felt like a very Eze pick in preseason, being a 7 million price midfielder in a very attacking team and could also be on penalties. He did return late in pre-season though after being in the Euros with England and there are question marks over Palace especially without Elise and Mateta might also not be ready for game week one. So Eze could actually be someone I chuck in the bin and if any player is likely to change from this team up until the game week one deadline it might be him but also he's certainly not a terrible option for that price and could also be used to jump on any of those bandwagons right from the start of the season. In Kunku, may have more balloons in his pocket than he has career goals, which, you know, I don't know. But at just 6.5 million, he's got to be, and most people are tipping him to be, the best scoring, highest scoring 6.5 mil mid. And after game week one, his fixtures are genuinely tastier than the fattest, juiciest Big Mac you've ever seen in your life. Haaland is, yeah, he's all right at football, right? He knows how to do the goal. But at 15 million, he is now the most expensive FPL player ever. But YouTube apology alert. As I've actually said multiple times in multiple videos that you should completely avoid him for that price. But I am actually a cheeky scrub 
and I have finally changed my mind. That's not because of FOMO. That's not because I've been saying it all for content. I did actually believe it at the time, but it's now more for the fact that we've had players like Jota and Solanke emerge and other amazing cheap players, which now just allows us to have Haaland and a very balanced squad. Meanwhile, the other more expensive players that you would probably spend the cash on if you didn't have Haaland in the likes of Salah and Palmer are actually very, very risky for the start of the season as they'll be playing under new management and you just don't know how they're going to settle or play in those systems just yet. With Haaland though, you know exactly what you're going to get. You're going to get a robot that's been in low power mode all summer and is proper rested and ready to go and is also the best captain pick for game week two. And that is actually one of the main reasons I'm not picking Salah now as even if I had Salah, I would not be captaining him in game week one. So without that captain in game week one, he all of a sudden doesn't look like a great value and a great pick. So out of the two, I would choose to pick Haaland just for that game game week two captaincy and also you know he could score points in any of the other game weeks too you know that's usually what he does wow you spent two minutes saying that Haaland is good in FBL well done bacon boy oh FBL tips you never see anywhere else apart from on my FBL only fans subscribe thank you the player that I will be captaining in game week one though is this guy Alexander the Great Alexander Isak when he's fit and ready to go and no homo he's looking pretty fit and ready he can match the likes of Haaland in any fixture so when he has this fixture right here against a newly promoted Southampton team at home yes daddy I think he is the best captain for game week one and he is gonna be my captain for game week one actually no no spoiler alert uh game week one captain video coming soon I bet you can't guess who I will be captain him but uh, make sure to stay tuned for that <laughs> and then my final starting forward it's the Don Dom Solanke the new Spurs man looks likely to start for them in game week one and could now be spearheading that Spurs attack that actually had the most shots out of anyone last season. Add someone like Solanke in there, who is literally a goal-hanging tap-in merchant, that could be very, very saucy, especially with those two opening sexy fixtures. He could end up being a bargain at 7.5 million. Worst case scenario, you can drop him down to like a Mooney's or someone else like that. My bench now contains the 4 million price non-playing goalkeeper for Southampton, Liss, for one reason, and one reason only. And this reason right here is going to help me win FPL. You're not ready for this, okay? The main reason he is in my squad is because he has the best kit out of any goalkeeper in the game. Oh, Wow, yes, you you not you haven't seen anything like this, lads. But also, he is not highly owned at all, so he should never fall in price, unlike the likes of Turner. And he also plays for a Southampton team, who I'm never going to triple up on, so I don't really mind if he takes up a Southampton spot rotting on my bench. We also have the 4 million price Barco for Brighton on my bench, who is a defender who could start and is also on set pieces. That for 4 million. Lord Lundstrom 2.0, 3.0. You heard it, you last. Everybody already knows about him, but you know, he's here. Then we also have the 4.5 million Anthony Robinson from Fulham. I'll go through what my team could look like in the next few game weeks after, but with him playing Leicester and Ipswich in game week two and three, and a slightly worse fixture in game week one, he provides the perfect opportunity to play Hall in game week one, and then Robinson can come in for his sexy fixtures and also provide great bench cover if I want to play somebody like a Barco or Hall instead as well. So that is absolutely lovely stuff. We are also going for a Sangari over Winks, as again, he's not very highly owned, so shouldn't fall in price, which Winks could. And actually, he has a much better fixture run. He's in a better team than a newly promoted Leicester. And if for whatever reason, half of my team's players' legs and arms fall off, you never know, he could be ready to go and could get some points. Likely, though, he's going to be last on my bench, chilling. And that right there is my team for game week one, locked and ready. Sitting on my hands, not making any changes, probably until tonight, but no. This is my team. We have a team that is super, super solid. Every single player here could score all of the points. Even though we've got Haaland, it's super balanced. Not a single forward or midfielder less than 6.5 million. We have amazing high upside for the first few game weeks, but it's also a very good squad and very good structure moving forward too. And especially with that 0.5 million in the bank, I could literally do anything. Jota to Palma. Okay, can't quite do that. But that gives me all of the plans that I could do. Using the amazing website FBL.team from Peter, we could see how our team could line up in game week two with Robinson coming in here. And every single player here also has very tasty fixtures going around. 
Same again in game week three, and we may even look to get rid of the likes of Jota and Eze if they aren't quite looking good moving forward. But apart from that, the team is looking very sexy, and I have plenty of options to move forward on too. Overall then, I am very happy with the squad, and I reckon it could actually get all of the points. Third in the world? Nah, better than that this time, mate. Here we go. That's going to be all for today. Thanks for watching, and also remember... <laughs> Don't be a cheeky scrub! Subscribe to Nathan Bacon right now. <laughs>